Join us as we guide you down the path to understanding the board game, Umbra Via. Umbra Via is an abstract tile placement game where you bid for tiles to complete paths. Each player starts off the game with a bag. Inside the bag are energy flowers and soul flowers. Each player also starts off with a soul tile, which has 11 soul flowers on it that you have to claim to win the game. The game is played over a course of rounds, and at the start of each round, four tiles are revealed. Each player will bid on the tiles in order to claim which one they want to place on the main board. You make your bids with the flowers, and if you win, then you place the tile with your energy flowers on it. Your goal is to use tiles to complete a path on the main board. And when you complete a path, you add up the energy flowers that are on that path. The player with the most energy flowers on the completed path claims the soul flowers from their soul tile. The first player to claim all 13 of their soul flowers wins the game. Most of the components are cardboard, but it's nice hard heavy duty cardboard. And the other components are these little flowers. And I do like the flowers, however, that's all that there is to the game. It's cardboard and these little flowers. So as we unbox it, you know, we have all these components in front of us. And, you know, sometimes you can take a look at all the components and think like, okay, this, this, this. But honestly, I had no idea. I didn't know how it all came together. What are the flowers for? Like, I just, I couldn't put my finger on anything. <laughs> Once we started learning how to play the game and played it for the first time and played it a couple times after that, I realized that it's more of an abstract type of a game. There's not a whole lot of story to it. It's more of a mathematical equation of, okay, I need to form this path. I need these tiles. How am I gonna, play, how am I gonna place it in order to achieve what I need to achieve? Even in the game description and what you just said about it being abstract, I think that was probably the biggest hurdle I had to mentally get over in my mind. Like when we first started playing and learning it and reading the directions, you know, I'm just like, but how does it all connect? I don't like, like normally, right? You get games where you can like, okay, I'm a dinosaur and I eat this, or uh, I'm a ranger and I got to find all these other things. Like, like something ties it together. But this one, it's like, you got paths, you got flowers, soul and energy. And then, and then you got your little like secret, how you're going to bid. And it's just, I don't know. If you didn't have a story, what little there is to it, you could still play this game and I can understand the mechanics. It's almost like someone said, okay, you need to do this. You need to place the tile so you can win these pieces and you bid on it. But then they added the story of, well, it's energy flowers and soul flowers and you're creating paths to escort souls into the land of the dead or away from the land of the dead or whatever exactly that it is. But that's not really that important and that doesn't change the mechanics of the game. Yeah, like you're, you're building the path, right? And you see, you see other people placing tiles and you're like, okay, do I want in on that path or do I start my own path? And then it's just like, oh, okay, none of it matters. You know, it doesn't matter. Like, where's the path going? Like, where? why are there flowers? I don't, I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> so the bidding process happens over two rounds. You bid once and then you see what everyone bid and then you bid again. So that first one, you kind of have to bluff if you're like, I really want that tile, but I don't want Lee to know that I want that tile. I'm gonna spread my flowers out, and then on the last one, I'm gonna really heavily bid and try to get that last token. So I really like the bidding mechanic, right? You know, we have our little little concealed parts where we do our bid, and once we're bid, we lift it up, and we're like, hi, I bet for number one or number three or wherever you put your flower, right? So that part of it, and then you're like, yes, I'm winning that one. And then when you finally win it, you're like, okay, why, why do I care? So, so once again, there's that hurdle again. <laughs> that just, that was with me throughout most of the game. And then to the very end, I was like, oh, okay, I get it. It's a clash of bidding and then tile placement area majority. But I think they do come together once your brain kind of accepts what's going on. So I do think that they work nicely in this game. So one of my critiques about it are these tiles. You know, these aren't the normal ones where it's like a, like a path, right? Where you like connect it or, or something like that to try and do the path. No, these all have their own little thing. And even right now, I can't, I can't remember what they do. And your little cheat sheet doesn't really tell you on the back either. And so every time these came up, it was like, what does that do again? Do I want that one? I, I, I don't remember what it does. Can't bid on that one. Oh, we'll see. <laughs> I think they're pretty easy to remember. And I think the yeah. shapes kind of help out. One's an empty tile, so when you place it on the board, your flowers remain on the board, but the yeah. tile doesn't. One has arrows I pointing know. to the other ones where you can, when you place a tile, you move the 
flowers over. Yeah, but and then just, one's a square, which is kind of like a block, which don't bet on this one. I know, yeah, I know there are different shapes and different colors. This has like a little flower and stuff, but it, it never connected in my mind and still hasn't. Like you just named everything and I think you said this one you don't bet on. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. That's just me, I guess. So overall, sorry, Panasaurus, I'm gonna have to give this a five. It just, I don't know, the, the story, you know, I need the story, I need connections. So I'm gonna give it a five. I'm gonna give this one an eight. I like the concept of the game. I like the bidding mechanic. I like the tile placement area majority. I like all the mechanics intertwined together. So I'm gonna give it an eight. And Teresa gives it a 10. And Juliana gives it a three. Oh. And that was our review of Umbravia. What'd you think? Are you ready to get your own path going and be as abstract as possible? Let us know in the comments below. And if you like our content, please subscribe to our channel. Until next time, I'm Lee. And I'm Kenny.